Good morning. One of the themes in the Bible, and particularly in the book of Hebrews, is the theme of endurance. And that's a topic that I think all of us could stand to reflect on a little bit these days. So I wanted to take us to Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 3, which is helpful to us because in part it tells us some of the challenges that we're going to have to face as it comes to endurance. But it also gives us a helpful strategy to find the kind of power that we need in our lives to be able to endure. So let's look at this passage. Hebrews chapter 12, it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. First of all, I think what we find is kind of the bad news, and that is that life is like a race, a very, very long race. Uh, you might think of a, a marathon or even an ultra marathon. And that as we run that race, we're going to get tired along the way. And he says that there's, there's two different things which will tend to tire us out and drag us down and reduce our energy to move towards the finish line. And the first, he says, is sin, which clings so closely to us. The author says that one of the things that will keep us from enduring is our own struggle with sinfulness. You can think of sinfulness almost like a, a siren call. Uh, sirens were creatures from uh, Greek mythology that were half woman, half bird. And the sailors would hear the sweet music of these birds singing and be uh, attracted to it and their ship would crash upon the rock. They would be destroyed. And the Bible pictures our sin as being just like that. It calls to us so seductively, but it, it leads only to our destruction. And, and it's something that as we seek to run faithfully, the race that the Lord has set before us will drag us down and keep us from the finish line. He says another thing that we'll have to fight as we seek to endure is also just the weight of life, the difficulties, the, the struggles that we face in life. Those things which may not be sinful, but they're challenges that we face along the way that we'll have to figure out how to deal with. Uh, right now, uh, some for some people, that's anxiety or isolation or uh, fears or concerns that they have about the future, but it could be anything at all. It's it's anything that that, that slows us down or that that keeps our eyes off off the finish line as we tend to head through life. And so what the author says is that in light of the fact that there are all sorts of weights and pressure that we feel in life, and there's all sorts of sin that's clinging to us and trying to drag us down. The, the, the character quality that we will need to have is we'll need to be able to endure. And then he tells us what that endurance looks like. He says that what we ought to do is to run with endurance the race that is set before us, doing what? Looking to Jesus. That the number one thing out of anything else which will help us to endure spiritually as we move through life is to keep our eyes centered on Jesus. And we're told three things about Jesus. First of all, we're told that he is the founder of our faith. Uh, another word for founder is the word pioneer. Uh, a pioneer is someone who goes ahead of a group and makes the way for the rest of us. They're, they're like the trailblazer. 
when I was a kid, my dad would take me cross country skiing and in the powdered snow, he would blaze the trail, which made it easier for me to follow after him. And we're told in the same way that Jesus has already run his race. He, he has already gone uh, ahead of us as our trailblazer. And now his race has ended in perfect victory. But not only that, but we're told about Jesus also that he is just the founder of our faith. He's the perfecter of the faith of our faith as well. That his victory, as we trust in, in his perfect work on our behalf, becomes ours. So just as he finished his race in perfection, that God promises that one day we will be made perfect too that all of the weights that you and I struggle with today, all of our sin, which we have to battle against because it clings so closely to us, all of those things will be removed. That there's a day coming, thanks to Jesus pioneering and his victory, that, that you and I will be made perfect in him. And then finally, it tells us one of the strategies that Jesus used as he endured his own race and the difficulty of the cross that he had to face as a part of that. It says, Look to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. What this tells us is that one of the, the ways that Jesus was able to endure all of the shame and hardship and, and, and pain and horrors of the cross and to keep a joyful attitude about it was that he looked ahead. It, it, it says here that for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. In other words, Jesus believed that there was something coming after the cross, after the difficulty, after the shame. And, of course, the passage reminds us that that was realized because even now he is seated at the right hand of God the Father. And so the passage tells us to consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself that you too do not grow weary or faint-hearted. In other words, just as Jesus was able to look ahead and recognize that even though he's going to face the cross, that in the end, everything was going to be right. In the end, there would be victory. In, in, in the end, all things would be as they should. We are encouraged to look at Jesus' life, to look at his faith, to look at his endurance and to model, our, model ourselves after it so that you and I would not grow weary and faint-hearted either. Our race is going to have an end. There's no race, it, there's nothing, no such thing as a race that doesn't have a finish line. And in the same way, our race will too. And so the Bible encourages us to think of the joy that is set before us, to think of the joy that we have in Christ, to think of the joy that will be in that victory when we are united with him, and to keep our eyes on him in the meantime. And I encourage you to consider those things as you seek to endure today.